Hello everyone, thanks for joining School of the American Rifle. I'm going to do another autopsy. This one's going to be for just a bolt carrier group. This is a bolt carrier group that one of the Facebook SOTAR members sent in to me. The owner said that he has tried this bolt carrier group in multiple ARs and they will not cycle properly. He used different bolt carrier groups in the same ARs and they cycle fine. So there's something particular about this bolt carrier group that is making the firearm not function. So what we're going to do is we're going to do an autopsy on this bolt carrier group, see if we can find out what's going on by using some inspection and gauging processes that I utilize and school of the American Rifle armors and build classes. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to see if we have a kind of serious defects on the carrier, cracks, just a good visual observation, inspection of the components. Then I'm going to begin stripping it down. Pull the firing pin out. I'm going to do a gas ring test. You can do this one of two ways. You can do it using a method like this to see if it holds the bolt and doesn't do this. But if it does do that, the next test would be to take the cam pin out, make sure the bolt's seated all the way, hold the bolt face down so gravity can do its job and see if it shakes loose. If it doesn't shake loose, then the gas rings are sufficient to be kept in this bolt. There's your gas rings. Next thing I'm going to do is inspect the bolt tail. I have a no-go and a field gauge. Even though this says no-go, my spec for no-go is this particular number. And I don't want to see the bolt tail go in. It doesn't. If it doesn't go in here, it's not going to go in there, but we'll try it anyway. So the bolt tail uh, passes. Next we're going to do a magnetic test. I'm going to see if anything on the bolt head or firing pin is magnetic. It's not. And that's not going to cause a cycling issue. It's just part of my inspection process. So no magnetism. Next thing I'm going to check is to make sure that there is no blockage in the gas key. So I use a piece of weed eater, weed whacker, whatever the, the term you want to use is. And I push it through to make sure there's no blockage. Sometimes a primer will pop out and get sucked in or driven in by the gas tube and it will shut the gas system down. We have a nice clear path. I can see inside of here, it's hard to see in the, there we go, right there in the camera that the weed eater line has passed, so we're good. Moving along, we're doing good with tests. Haven't found any problems so far. Next I'm going to try the firing pin hole. It should take the green side. It does. Red side should not go in. It tells me the firing pin hole is not too large and we pass there as well. Next we're going to move to firing pin protrusion. I'm take this depth or anvil gauge I'm going to set it onto the bolt, right over the firing pin hole, turn it on, zero it out, and see what kind of protrusion we have. We have .0325, which falls in acceptable range. We're looking for from .028 to .035. So we are good there. Firing pin protrusion is good. Firing pin retaining pin looks good. Cam pin doesn't have any excessive wear on it. Looks good there. Next we're going to look at the extractor. I'm going to try to gauge that. I need to grab my gauge because I forgot to grab that. This is the gauge that I use to test the extractor groove. So the first test is a feel test. I run across the claw. Feels good. And then I try the go side. Make sure that this goes into the groove. And it does. And then try the no-go side, and it does not go in. So the extractor passes. So a lot of stuff's passing so far. Next thing I want to do is going to be a gauging of the carrier key three bore. So I have these various pin gauges here. I want to see where we fall in range. What can happen is, is if the bores inside here are too large. When it tries to seal with the tail of the bolt or the gas rings, you can get excessive leakage. Now, I'm thinking out of the gate that this is not a problem here because if you look at the 
carbon marks here, we can see a really good seal here. We don't have a whole lot of blow by in the area here on the bolt head. So I'm thinking we have a pretty good fit here. We didn't fail our tail gauge. So let's go ahead and give it a try. The, most, the least important part as far as gassing goes is this front. So I'm going to start there. It takes my first go. My second go is tight. And I don't think we're getting in into the yellow range here. Shouldn't be dropping that like that. Oh, we're into the yellow range. So the support area here that interfaces with the bolt is a little loose. But again, that has nothing to do with gas. It has to do with how much support the bolt has when it's in the carrier. So it still passes, just a little bit sloppy. Next, we're going to test our gas ring run. First green goes. Second green goes. Getting into the, oh, we are into the yellow range here. So it is a little bit gas inefficient in the gas ring run. Let's see if we fall into the red range. We don't. So again, not terrible. We're not getting into the range where I think that the bolt carrier is inefficient, but that's just the gas ring interface between here and inside the carrier. So we're in the yellow there. Let's try it now with the bolt tail interface. So try the first green gauge. And again, I'm moving pretty fast here. First green went in, second green went in. Now we're getting to the yellow range. And that one went in and we're not going to be able to get into the red range. So this particular bolt carrier is not what I refer to as extremely efficient. The bolt tail seal and the gas ring seal inside the bolt carrier is not as efficient as something that would be like you would find in a Colt or a, um, a more well-known bolt carrier group that has a good and efficient seal here. Again, it doesn't mean that it's a failure. It just means that on some guns, it will exhibit um, gas efficiency issues or cycling issues. So not great, not terrible. Um, that usually doesn't cause a bolt not to work across several platforms. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to check and see if our carrier key is loose. And one thing that stands out to me is we do have a little bit of gas leakage right here on the edge of the gas key. That could be carbon that built up. Let's see if we can get this to move. I have no movement here, so it's not obviously loose. Staking on it looks good. The thing that does stand out to me is it does have YFS fasteners. I don't like to see that. So what I do for a test is I use a Wheeler fat wrench. These do reverse torque. What I'll do is I'll set them to 20 inch pounds and actually do a reverse torque test. So if it breaks free at 20 inch pounds, that usually means that there's, and I'm, I'm guesstimating here because you have to take into account for carrier key screw stretch and the staking. But generally, if it breaks loose at 20, then that means we either have an extremely loose carrier key screw or something's broken. Like one of those screws can break off. So I'm going to insert this into here. So we're going to move over to the vise so we can get a good stable lock on this. So we can get a good view on the camera. We're going to lock this in here. We don't want to squeeze it. As you can see, set to 20 inch pounds. Let's see what we get. I'm going to take a really close look at this screw here. Look at that. At 20 inch pounds. Loose. Let's go to the other one. Look at that. No effort at all. Alright, so we're going to take these out. We're going to take a look underneath of the carrier key. I'm going to keep on going. These things should not have been this loose. We probably have a good bit of carbon leaking out between the carrier key and the bolt carrier. Look at that. There's metal underneath of it. I have no idea where that's from. Maybe from the assembly process and that's probably why it didn't get a good seal. You can see a chunk of metal right here. And then look at all the gas leaking around the gas key right here. Look at that. Terrible gas seal. You can actually see the indent here on the carrier key where that metal transferred an impact onto the carrier key. So this was there before it was assembled and that prevented this from sealing well. Something so simple, but it also wasn't torqued down well. You can see a lot of fouling around these screws, so they, they weren't getting a good seal.
Try to get a good zoom. There we go. Look at all the fouling under there. You usually shouldn't see something built up like that. But the telltale sign is right around the gas port, which is right here on here. We can see a lot of carbon blowing out of there. So that was the reason this won't run. It has nothing to do with the dimensions of the inside of the carrier keyboard. That could be a factor, but the main issue is this is loose. Now, we didn't get into checking headspace, but um, I don't think that that's it. But uh, we can try it. Let's see what we get. We're going to move over here. going to take the bolt, and we're going to use a known barrel that has good headspace. This falls right in the proper range for good headspace. So I'm going to use the green gauge, which is a 1.4636556 go. My gauges are modified, so we don't have to remove the ejector. And it does pass the 223 go. Now we're going to move up to the 556 go, which is 1.4646. This should also close. If it doesn't close, this would be another reason why it may have cycling problems. And it does close. Just barely, but it does close. And then we'll try it with the field gauge. It should not rotate on this or close, and it doesn't. So this bolt carrier group passed every test we threw at it. It was a little bit gas efficient on the carrier 3-bore. But as you can see, this was the main cause, so a loose carrier key. We had some pretty junky fasteners. But this was a good autopsy on this particular bolt carrier group. This is why it would fail. Now, it's funny because of the name of the company who makes it, but it did fail. And uh, this could be put back in the service. I would not reuse this carrier key because it was already staked. And if you try to reuse it, sometimes you can't displace enough metal to get a good staking on it. Um, so it would need a new carrier key, new carrier key screws, everything scrubbed down. Uh, one thing you can run into when you replace a carrier or screw carrier key or screws on nickel boron is sometimes the coating of the nickel boron gets inside these bores here for the screws and it gives you a false torque reading. So let me grab a screw real quick to see if we can see that in this particular example. So what will happen is, is when that's built up in there you're trying to torque your screws down you get a false torque reading and it says that you've reached let's say 58 inch pounds and you haven't. I have some carrier key screws here and let's see if we can get this to thread in. Look at that with my fingers. I cannot go down any further. So this is another reason why it wasn't torqued right because there's coating from the nickel boron in the threaded bores. I cannot get it to screw in. So to reuse this I would have to run a tap in there to chase those bores. There we have it. We have a cause for why this bolt carrier won't run. So I appreciate you watching. I hope this was a fun and educational video. And I will see you guys soon. Thanks for watching.